Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up on the show. My guest today is a staple on the stage here in Paris, an award-winning actor and director who scored France's top theatre prize for his first play. Alexis Michalik is one to watch and he's here in the studio. The young wizard all grown up, Harry Potter is treading the boards in London in a theatrical production that imagines the Hogwarts alumni as an adult with children of his own. And the woman who made French knitwear a fashion must-have. Sonia Riquel has died aged 86. We take a look back at the career of a creative pioneer. Alexis, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Well, for viewers who aren't familiar with your work, you're a regular here on the Parisian stage. You've won two prestigious Moliere Awards and you're in a familiar face also on the small screen and in cinema. Uh, at the moment, you're directing your self-written play, Edmond. The protagonist is Edmond Rostand, the playwright behind Cyrano de Bergerac, very famous French piece of theatre. It's a behind-the-scenes look at the world of theatre, quite meta about a playwright. Is it autobiographical in any way? Well, it wasn't at first, but uh, the more I'm rehearsing it, the more I realise that I'm really in empathy with the, the character of Edmund, because, of course, it's about how a play is, uh, is rehearsed and set and designed from the point of view of the writer-slash-director. Um, so, yeah, I feel, uh, I feel a lot in common with him, but it's not at all autobiographic. It's really based on real events and how it really happened, because the, the, the true story is amazing. The story of the premiere of Cyrano, it's kind of the last triumph uh, in the theatre-wise, because after that, uh, movies arrive. Um, it's the 1900s, so this is set in 1897. So it's the last uh, huge productions, huge plays, and uh, nobody believes that it's going to be a hit. Everybody thinks that it's very, it's very old-fashioned. It looks like a, a 18th-century play, and everybody thinks it's going to, it's going to be terrible. And in fact, it's going to be the biggest triumph in the whole of uh, uh, French theatre. Of course, Cyrano de Bergerac became a very important part of the canon. As you mentioned, we relive the birth of cinema in this play, a scene where the Lumière brothers screen their short film in 1895. Do you think cinema was perceived as a real threat to theatre at the time? At the time, no, of course not. Uh, well, Edmund, in, in the play, Edmund says, oh, I, I fear that this is going to be bigger than us, but it's what happened in real life in the, in the 20th century. Uh, movies, uh, movie rooms became to, started replacing theatre rooms, and that's what happened, really. And productions became more and more important movie-wise and less and less important theatre-wise. So imagine uh, for the premiere of Cyrano, Cyrano de Bergerac, there were 100 actors on stage. 100 actors, which is impossible today. Today you get 10 actors, it's enormous. But at that time, it wasn't so, so, so rare, you know? It was a big production, but it was kind of what our, our huge movies would be today, you know? It would, it would, okay, let's put 60 actors on stage and extras and battles, and, and there were those kind of theatres. At that time, here in Paris, there were like 3,000 seat theatres with, uh, with uh, ships fighting, with real water and real fighting. That was before the movies arrived. Well, we've certainly moved to a much more modern style of production and staying with theatre and going to the stage in London, a production of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is drawing the crowds night after night. The play sees the Hogwarts graduate at a later stage of life, married and with children of his own. Jamie Parker plays the protagonist. He told us about taking on the role. I've never worked on a play where I've heard audible gasps from audiences, not because of some amazing special effects, although we are getting those, but it's just release of information. It's just things that these characters are saying to each other. You, know, you, sp you spend a large part of any theatre performance convincing people that they've done the right thing and buying the ticket and that this is a story that they want to hear. We hit the ground running on that front. You know, they, they want to be here, they want to know what happens. They're desperately hungry to be told this story. Alexis, coming back to your career on the stage, your first play, Le Porteur d'Histoire, or The History Teller, was a critical smash here in France. You won two Moliere Awards, very prestigious theatre awards here. The play's about storytelling itself. How did that idea come about? 
uh, yeah, I, f I was afraid you were going to ask me to resume the play, or, but it, it's impossible to resume. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's about stories itself. It's a kind of an homage to uh, the big storytellers of the 19th century, such as Alexander Dumas, and how they used to, kind of in the way that uh, today uh, TV shows are made, uh, because at the time they wrote like a chapter after another and published it in newspapers. And so it had to be full of suspense and anticipation, because if it wasn't, they wouldn't buy the next one. So I kind of designed it in that way, scene after scene, trying to make the scene end in a way that you have to stay there and wait for the next one and you have no idea what's going to happen. So it's this homage about this and there's like different periods of time crossed. It's impossible to, to summarize but, but it, it worked in a very odd way. We weren't absolutely not sure that it was going to work. It was supposed to play for three days only and it's now been running for five years. So it's 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 a kind of a fairy tale story. Okay, so a suspense in in real life performance. Yeah, it's uh, not not so much that, but in the writing of it. I mean, uh, and it's it's uh, different periods mixing. It's someone starts telling a story, and then you see the story happening, and someone in the story starts telling another story. So it, and so it's kind of an it's inception, but on the stage, okay. but with really not much uh, not much ways and really no sets, really no much money. We made it for for almost nothing and just the you know lights and music and very simple way and great actors of course of course well as well as theatre you've also ventured into cinema acting in the 2008 biopic Sagan where you play writer Francois Sagan's son let's take a look at a clip of that qu'est-ce qui nous est arrivé maman on n'était pas fait l'un pour l'autre Si t'avais cru en moi, j'aurais peut-être eu une chance d'être à la hauteur de ce que tu attendais. Oh, mais j'ai cru en toi. J'ai tellement cru en toi que tu ne pouvais que me décevoir. And as well as those appearances on the big screen, you've acted on the small screen in the series Versailles. That's a very lavish production, uh, English-speaking drama set in the castle of Versailles. It almost looks like Hollywood. Would you be tempted to uh, go to do Hollywood movies? Who wouldn't? But, I mean, it's strange, but they're not calling. I've been waiting, I've been expecting the call, but no. But I'll, I'll do whatever. Acting for me is like, it's holiday, you know, it's vacation. I mean... Uh, when you put on a play, when you direct a movie, whatever, it's so much work, it is so much pressure on your shoulders that when you get on a set and people bring you a hot beverage and ask if everything's okay and did you learn your lines, yeah, I've learned my three lines, no problem. So it's like, it's, it's, when I'm on set, I'm just, I've got a smile from here to there. It's wonderful, so what, whatever comes, I'll take it. I think you might be ready for Tinseltown then. <laughs> well, we're moving to news from the world of fashion now. The designer nicknamed the Queen of Knitting, Sonia Riquel, has died at 86. Known for her casual yet elegant style, Riquel made stripes a staple of the Parisian woman's wardrobe and was honoured as a pioneer in the industry. Charles Pellegrin takes a look at her career. With her striking looks and elegance, Sonia Riquel gave life to the concept of style. Her fiery red hair stood out and pointed towards the path she would follow. Everyone could see my hair. On me voyait partout. It was almost a provocation. In her mind, fashion is a party. She started in the industry in the 60s and taught herself how to make her own clothes and not to look like anyone else. Outfits for her should liberate women, not trap them. In 1968, a year of social upheaval in France, she came up with a concept of demud that strips off the markers of traditional fashion. In the past, to be fashionable, you had to wear a fitted suit, a skirt of a specific length, clothes made in a very particular way. So she created sweaters that could be worn without a bra, dresses without hemlines, and jackets without linings. She got rid of shoulder pads and committed the ultimate insult of making seams visible. You couldn't wear clothes inside out. It was impossible. It didn't exist. But why not? Having an outfit inside out shows a free body and a free mind. Sonia Riquel was a stylist, a feminist, a writer. She was a fashion intellectual. I want people to think of me as a witness of my era, someone who embraces the times politically, intellectually, socially and environmentally. 
And because Riquiel is a woman's brand, her daughter took over. In 2008, as a present to her mother, Natalie brought together all the designer outfits inspired by Sonia's work. Hello. Now the whole world knows her knitwear. We're all indebted to her, especially when it comes to women's casual wear. She really made a mark on the world of fashion. She did things that made me want to do other things, just because she did them. Mysterious, elegant and irreverent. That's how Sonia Riquel will be remembered. Well, we're finishing the show with a little bit more theatre. Alexis, your top pick is a play running called Cousin Comme Cochon, or Cousins Like Pigs. Why should we be rushing to see this one? Because uh, in this summer, we, I think we need a little bit of something light. And it's very light, it's very funny, it's a musical, kind of a vaudeville musical like French comedy. Uh, it's uh, written, directed, and the piano is played by Nicolas Lombreras. Uh, and it's, uh, it's really fresh and funny, and, and there is not so many nice musicals uh, in Paris that are as, uh, as um, I don't know, how, how the music is as good as the, as the play, and in this one, it's, it's, it's really a great moment. So just go ahead and enjoy your time. OK, so a little bit of French comedy and, of course, your play, Edmond, is on at the Théâtre du Palais Royal from the 15th of September. Yes. Alexis, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, we'll leave you with a short clip of that play, Cousin Comme Cochon. Remember to check out our website. You can also follow Encore on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Non, 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 je n'entrerai pas pour tout. Non, 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 non.